All right, everyone, we start off today talking about Biden's farce of an address from the other day with regards to the Kabul airport attacks. I thought about actually doing a live reaction, and people seemed to be enthusiastic about it, but I'd already done a live thing uh, where I was uh, re responding to Kamala Harris talking about some leftoid sellouts and stuff, so I just didn't have the fucking energy. I can only do so much in a day, and I also do editing, writing, and <laughs> everything else under the sun, because... Uh, I like to keep active. Being inactive, actually one of my biggest pet peeves. If I have to wait for five minutes for something, I start getting shaky. Anyway, his speech can best be summed up in three parts. First and foremost, uh, I feel your pain. Oh, I had a son who was in Iraq, then he got cancer and died. So somehow this is similar to the fact that I've bungled the response in Afghanistan. Sorry that your sons and daughters just got splattered. Eh, sorry about that, but I know your pain. Even though that wasn't even the result of a logistic failure, that was the result of a lack of awareness about depleted uranium's potential dangers in the use of armor and munitions. Secondly, oh, don't worry, we'll retaliate at a time of our choosing, whenever we want to, at our own sole discretion. In other words, probably never. Not going to do jack shit. Certainly not in Afghanistan. You think the Taliban-led government is going to openly allow U.S. troops to uh, fire on targets? Where are you going to launch the uh, strikes from? <laughs> Certainly not from Kabul. Uh, and then basically like, hey, but it's not my fault, and, and I'll take some questions, but, you know, I've selected them beforehand, and he said something mysterious, which was that he was instructed uh, in, uh, to take the ABC question first. So he literally, the uh, so-called president, I think we all know this if we're cognizant, uh, he gets his instructions from other people. He's not making his own independent decisions. This is neither a surprise nor even a particular secret. It's openly rumored that Biden is basically Woodrow Wilson at this point, and he's, other people are calling the shots. He just gets trotted out and, and hopped up full of caffeine and meth and stuff like that in order to function. Now, before we ridicule the overall Afghan response one more time, which I, I suspect will not be the last, there'll probably be more attacks. There, it's so bad that the U.S. intel community is openly telling the public to expect more attacks at the Kabul airport. Lowered expectations much, right? There will be a pinned comment down below, though, with links to four other video hosting sites that I use. Again, keep in mind, if you're new to this channel, I make four videos a day, sometimes five. Two of them are always going to be exclusive to those other four platforms. That is Mines, Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble. They don't go on YouTube. This is often due to the content of those videos, and also YouTube no longer rewards workhorses. Actually, it rewards live streaming more because live results actually, people see them in the side tab, so they actually, they don't even need to get notified to know that it's a thing. So if a person mainly likes live streaming, eh, you better stream more often. It's the only way to grow on YouTube now. You can't be a workhorse and do one-offs like you used to do in the 2000s or 2010s. But here's the thing. <clears throat> I hated this address. I realize that his response in general has been inept. But this takes the cake. In the wake of three significant terrorist attacks at the Kabul airport, all of which could have been avoided, when did Joe Biden address the elephant in the room, which is if the Taliban is not working with ISIS, and I, and I take that for granted as true, they, they're not allies of one another. The Taliban and ISIS have almost diametrically opposed goals in the region. The second the U.S. is gone, they'll probably start killing each other. That being said, if the Taliban's not working with ISIS, it shows that they don't have full control of Kabul. Because they've got checkpoints all around the Kabul airport. Entire airport is surrounded by the Taliban. Somehow, though, ISIS forces managed to get through one of those checkpoints unimpeded. And then they blew themselves up. We then heard yesterday, and I don't know whether this has been confirmed or not, but this is what sources say. Take that with a grain of salt, although the Soviet can be kind of hit or miss, but his accuracy is reasonable, so I guess it's more than a 50-50 chance of this. Uh, the, the word went out that the United States had supplied to the Taliban a list of the names and so forth of U.S. citizens so they could get through the checkpoints. See, the problem is if you do that, it gets spread to thousands of Taliban members, all you need is one of those Taliban members to say, hey, I got some friends over in ISIS, a double agent, that'll pay me a boatload of fucking money if I give them this list. <clears throat> They'll know exactly uh, how to get through the checkpoints. Yeah, my name is... is Rashid Abdul. Oh, Rashid Abdul. Yeah, you're on the list. Okay, go through. And the Taliban lets them through because they think they were a translator or something. And then they fucking blow themselves up. How did the Taliban, because I, I guarantee the ISIS member had to go through at least one checkpoint, he didn't notice the bomb vest? 
Yeah, it was concealed. Yeah, it still had a blast large enough to kill, you know, dozens of people in one go. <laughs> okay, that makes a lot of sense. Nobody wants to ask that question. And uh, therefore, Biden managed to carefully, carefully script, as usual, the questions he did take. I guess he didn't dare to just do a 180 and walk out after a brief statement. He actually had to give like a full length speech. And of course, by the end, he's like nodding off and shit, then has to take some questions. When Biden does take questions from the captive media, they're always screened, number one. But you know that shit has really hit the fan because he's not inclined to do that. He's also not inclined to be up past his bedtime of probably 3, 4 p.m. to give an address at all. So this is, now it's beyond unmitigated disaster. It's total goddamn chaos. They're openly expecting, they're, they're warning the U.S. people, hey, get ready, there'll be more of this shit. If ISIS is in the area of the Kabul airport, trust me, they are one bribe away from getting a, a, a rocket or, or something to bring down a jetliner right as it's lifting off. If that happens, then you see all hell break loose. And it goes careening through the wall, through the uh, defensive barrier that the Marines have made, killing hundreds or thousands of people in the process, and then a bunch of ISIS troops storm in and start uh, slaughtering everyone. It's clear that they don't care if they die, since they gladly blow themselves up with a smile. What's the Taliban going to do? Oh, those wings will slice right through their lines too. Create a nice big gap. ISIS will probably try something like that. They're nuts. <laughs> Al-Qaeda was afraid of them. Uh, if I, the only group in the entire world willing to work with ISIS openly was Boko Haram. And, you know, they regularly round up hundreds of schoolgirls, rape them to death, and then uh, dis uh, uh, sever their cadavers and eat them and shit like that. So, you know, you'd be definitely uh, good friends with a group like ISIS. Uh, the Taliban's not working with them. That points to dysfunction, ineptitude. Maybe the Taliban's inept too. I mean, which would explain why... You know, Biden associates so heartily with them. He's such good, such good friends with the Taliban at this point. Oh, we're working. Don't worry, we've sent the CIA over to talk with them. That'll result in good things. I guess that's involving the opium trade. Hey, we don't care if you kill all these civilians once we leave, but hands off the opium. we got to keep uh, the prison pipeline going. It's a lot of uh, heroin addicts, and we've really made it cheap. So uh, we, we needed to compete with Chinese fentanyl. People get that uh, really great poppy field stuff that we've been supplying them, and we're making lots of money. So uh, donate. We'll give you a cut. We'll give the big guy 10%. We'll give your big guy 10% too, and we'll call it a day. How does that sound? That's how the CIA works when it conducts diplomacy. <clears throat> and Biden's address overall was horseshit. More non-answers. More deflection. More, it was inevitable, just get used to it. We heard this some during the Obama administration. Well, I know unemployment's high, but it's inevitable. There's nothing we can do about it. At every hazard, he was proven wrong. Oh yeah, terrorist attacks are just par for the course in this modern century. Well, it's funny how ISIS dried up uh, and da almost died under Donald Trump's leadership. It's funny how in less than a year of Joe Biden's non-leadership, they've come roaring back to the point where Biden, to save face, has to invent ISIS-K trying to differentiate one particular regional block of ISIS from all of the others for absolutely no purpose whatsoever. Other than, of course, saving face. Convincing people, ah, not that ISIS is back in general. Don't worry about them in like Libya and Syria and shit. This is just an Afghanistan problem. ISIS is a caliph movement. And without U.S. leadership to do jack shit about it, and with the U.S. going back to being too busy bullying Iran to actually let them mop up ISIS in certain regions, oh, yeah, they'll come back. There'll be more attacks. Maybe there'll be another 9-11. Joe Biden would be absolutely overjoyed because then he'd be able to bomb some more people using the public sphere. That's about all. Peace out.